Welcome to my presentation. I first of all thank the International Society of Tropical Foresters for organizing this online symposium and for giving me the opportunity to make my presentation on carbonized briquettes enhancing sustainable wood fuel supply in Sub-Saharan Africa. <coughs> Globally, it's projected that by 2050, by energy will contribute about 26% of total global energy mix. This is because of improving technologies in the production and utilization of bioenergy as newer and cleaner fuels like pellets and briquettes come on board. It's also attributed to increasing human population uh, especially in areas whereby people may not afford uh, other conventional energy resources like liquefied petroleum gas. And there are also the concerned uh, by countries on net zero emissions. And uh, biomass is considered one of the energy resources that can achieve that. In Sub-Saharan Africa, about 85% of bioenergy is supplied by wood fuel, and this shows the overdependence on this resource. Therefore, there has been unsustainable harvesting of wood for wood fuel, and this is contributing to deforestation and exposure of forest lands that is in uh, increasing uh, greenhouse gas emissions. This over dependence on wood fuel is affecting the country's ability to attain gender equality because it's women and children that walk long distances and spend more time looking for wood fuel, especially firewood. It's also affecting uh, uh, the ability of countries to attain affordable and clean energy, climate action, and life on land, because selective harvesting of trees for by energy, especially for charcoal, is causing biodiversity loss. Regardless of these consequences of wood fuel harvesting, 90% uh, of the population in Sub-Saharan Africa depend on wood fuel as their primary energy resource, and they majorly use it in inefficient cookstoves, uh, such as the three stone. So most of the resource is wasted because of that inefficiency. One alternative to reduce over dependence on wood fuel is use of alternative fuels such as liquefied petroleum gas, solar and electricity. But these sources uh, have remained expensive for a long time and their adoption have remained low. According to UNEP 2019, the use of carbonized briquettes from readily available agricultural residues is the most practical solution to deal with wood fuel uh, problems in terms of their unsustainable supply. However, the main question is how much resource do we have in terms of how much residues do we have that we can use it in for briquetting? And how much uh, wood and charcoal will we be able to replace by uh, using briquettes instead of wood fuel? So for those who would like to understand the steps involved in briquetting, uh, it entails collection of transportation collection and transportation of feedstock, and then preparing this feedstock like 
drying them or chopping into smaller pieces, then carbonizing them in a kiln. After which, we now have biochar that we can mix with binder and water in a mixer, and then press them in a, a briquetting machine. It can be a manual machine or motor operated machine. After which, we dry the briquettes, package them for distribution, and then we use them. Now, for us to understand how much uh, wood we are going to replace with the briquettes, let's first of all determine uh, wood fuel supply demand balance in sub Saharan Africa, which is basically supply of food for energy minus the demand of food for energy. The annual demand of food for energy is determined by dividing the total energy demand from wood by the product of efficiency of using the energy and cross heat of combustion of wood. Uh, according to Roth, uh, the energy of using biomass energy in sub-Saharan Africa, especially in terms of cooking, has an efficiency range of between 14% to 44%. So in this case, I divided uh, the least plus the maximum divide by two so that I can get the average to avoid overestimation and or underestimation of uh, demand. Then cross heat of combustion of wood varies from region to region and from species to species. But according to Lumamba, the average Lubwama, the average is 15.5 kikajus per ton. In terms of supply of wood, we need to determine the amount of wood supplied for firewood and wood supplied for charcoal. Then we add them together. For wood supplied for firewood, we multiply density of wood by annual per capita consumption of wood and total human population. In this case, uh, Density of wood according to FAO, the average is 0.25 tons per meter cubed. In terms of amount of wood supplied for charcoal, we multiply uh, annual per capita consumption of charcoal by wood to charcoal conversion factor and total human population. In this case, uh, the wood conversion factor I used is 12 to 1 because most of the wood used in charcoal production in sub-Saharan Africa is green and they are converted in more inefficient uh, kilns, especially the earth mound kiln. So the efficiency is very low, leading to very low conversion factor. Now, we need to get the amount of crops residues that we have for briquetting. And first of all, we determine the available crop residues. This is the total amount of crop residues that we have. We multiply total crop productivity by ratio to product, by residue to product ratio. Uh, total pro crop productivity is a total of how much crop was harvested in a particular year from a particular crop. Then residue to product ratio is the ratio that defines how much uh, residue can be obtained from a certain harvest. This ratio may differ based on breeding level or the environmental conditions. And using now that uh, total available crop residues, we can determine the available surplus crop residues. Because we know that though we have residues total in total, some of them are already engaged in other uses. So we need to get the surplus that we use in uh, briquetting. To determine this, we multiply available residues by surplus available factor. Then if we have this uh, surplus crop residues, we can determine the amount of biochar we get 
by multiplying surplus residue by kiln efficiency. And now here, using the total amount of crop residues we have, we can determine the amount of briquettes energy we can get from briquettes. And we get this by multiplying the amount of biochar produced by cross heat of combustion of briquettes and efficiency of briquette utilization. So if we now have the amount of energy that we can obtain from briquettes, then we can easily determine how much wood can produce a similar amount of energy. This can be determined by dividing the energy obtaining, obtained from briquettes by the product of efficiency of wood, fuel cookstuff, and cross heat of combustion of wood. Using these methods now, we got that uh, the wood fuel balance in South Sub-Saharan Africa varies between and among countries. For example, there are five countries that have surplus whereby they have less than zero deficiency. And we have those that are medium, which are five, 15, 15 countries that their deficiency deficit ranges from zero to 50%. And we have those that have high deficit and they are 25 in number. That uh, their deficit is greater than 50% of the demand. In terms of available crop residues, we can get a total of 3.5 times 10 power 8 tons of biochar per year, which is equivalent to 3.6 times 10 raised to power 8 tons of dry wood. This means that the amount of energy produced by 3.5 times 10 raised to power 8 tons of wood of briquet is equivalent to the amount of energy produced by 3.6 times 10 raised to power 10 times of uh, tons of dry wood. In terms of specific uh, residues, we can see that maize tobacco has 18.4% contributes 18.4% of total residues, and cassava and uh, sweet potato peels contribute 19.1%. Uh, Now, based on the business as usual, uh, the demand of wood for wood fuel is 2.2 times 10 raised to power 9 tons of wood per year. Out of this, 44.6% uh, is supplied sustainably, while 55.40% is uh, a deficit. That means it's filled through unsustainable uh, harvesting or supply. Now, in this equation, if we include uh, the contribution of briquettes, which is 16.1% of the total demand of 2.2 times 10 raised to power 9 tons of wood, we can see that we reduce the deficit level from 55.4% zero percent to thirty nine point three percent therefore briquettes uh, can play a major role in reducing the wood fuel deficit in sub-saharan africa in conclusion wood fuels uh, supply demand balance in sub-saharan africa vary uh, from one country to another with some countries having surplus while others having, having deficits. Uh, maize tova and potato peels are the most common potential feedstocks in terms of surplus available residues. And the 16.1% reduction in wood fuel supplied by, uh, so, uh, the 16.1% reduction in wood fuel supply demand deficit by briquettes could reduce deforestation attributed to wood fuel harvesting. Now, for us to improve the 
contribution of crop residues and briquettes towards reducing uh, supply demand deficit of wood fuel, we need to improve the efficiency in production, for example, the kiln use in carbonization, and also efficiency in utilization by improving the efficiency of the cookstove we use. These are some of the references I use.